Hey guys, so we have pretty much what I'm going to dub as the beginning of the countdown to the anniversary. Uh, we are now less than two weeks away from, um, you know, the anniversary beginning. Uh, last year, I think it be began on the 31st of May, and right now it is the 19th, so we're only about 12 days away here. Um, this maintenance is a, uh, a game-wide maintenance, so it's not one of those ones where it's like only the summons are in maintenance or only PvP's in maintenance. No, everything's going to be in maintenance, um, lasting from, uh, does that say 2? No, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern to 5 a.m. Eastern, so that's 8 hours. That's a long maintenance. Um, and if you take a look at, actually, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Spider here because he actually summarized what uh, everything that's going away here. Uh, Golden Showdown Exchange Shop, Hybrid Dimensional Co-op, so the co-op event's going away. Uh, the, the Vegeta event, uh, the Goku Black event, the Kakarot Goku event, 17 event, and Ultra Space Time Rush. So we have <laughs> literally like two-thirds of the events that are available right now are all going away tonight. So um, either they're going to have to release some kind of new event or they're going to have to bring back a lot of old events to fill in these gaps here because this all, with all this stuff going away the only event that's going to really remain uh, f to, you know here for the rest of this week is that uh, that Goku Day Rush thing and then literally everything else is going away <laughs> like everything so um, I don't know if we're going to get new characters with this maintenance I don't think so I think they're done releasing new characters until the anniversary actually starts so they might rehash a banner. They might bring a ba an old banner back. I think a good candidate for that is um, the Legends Rising banner with Super Vegito and Broly. Uh, the Transforming Super Vegito. Because I think now that everybody has... Uh, well, a lot of people have summoned for Kefla and Gotenks. Um, a lot of people you know, are regretting not summoning for the Super Vegito. So I think that would be a really good bait banner for them to release right now. Um, you know, right before the anniversary starts because... <clears throat> <clears throat> that's a banner that I think a lot of people would actually summon for, summon on, to pair alongside Kefla and Gotenks. So something like that I'm expecting. I don't think they're going to actually drop a new unit. Uh, maybe maybe LF Frieza or LF Piccolo Legends Premium. I, I don't know. We will see. Um, but that uh, pretty much is what we got going on for maintenance. And then the big thing that I sort of want to talk about here is... This. So they put a preview out talking about Battle Version 2.2 um, uh, and then something else too we can talk about later. So basically they made a few changes. Now this Battle System Update, uh, first of all Battle System Update is what I wanted to see the most out of the anniversary and this is sort of like the first thing that we're seeing um, that's going to come out of, I guess the you, you could sort of lump this in with the anniversary. Um, so we'll just take a look here. Um, the, the volume of changes here is not that big, but I think the importance is going to be massive. Uh, the game will be upgraded to Battle Version 2.2 alongside the maintenance on 520. Oh, so it's actually coming out. Oh, it's coming out tonight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess I will uh, plan on doing a video tomorrow talking about you know the impacts of these changes. But we'll we'll, we'll talk about my my initial thoughts here, but. I will do a video talking about what uh, you need to look out for tomorrow when I actually, you know, have experience using this, uh, what they change here. Um, uh, so it includes changes that gives uh, players to ch the chance to enjoy more tactical battles, fine. Um, update contents, tackle adjustments, that's, that's the big thing here. Um, the player under attack was unable to act for a longer period of time than intended when tackles were used in combos, making them unable to respond until the combo finished. The attacking player could also gain an advantage by performing a tackle at the start. Of, oh, sorry, at the end of a combo. Uh, we have made adjustments so that tackle perfor tackles performed against enemies who are already under attack, uh, such as after receiving an arts attack, will only knock your opponent back to mid range and cannot be continued into a combo. Um, so this is really uh, aimed towards uh, just completely killing the tackle step thing. Uh, and what tackle step is, if you guys aren't aware, you guys probably know what it is if you saw it in game, but just the name is like a little bit weird. Uh, it's the thing where you sidestep, go into mid range, tackle, and then continue just you know doing art, uh, strike cards. 
And that was a way that um, a lot of players were able to extend combos into like super long strings so that they could uh, just eat time to get their other units back in uh, and just whittle their uh, switch timer down. That's basically the whole, the whole premise of how that worked. Um, and it looks like they uh, want to completely get rid of it, and I'm fine with that. I'm actually in favor of this change. I think this is a good change. Um, so, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I do think that that was probably a pretty big problem um, because it pretty much nullified. If you got priority against somebody uh, with a unit that has a bunch of strike attacks or strike arts cards in their hand, uh, you pretty much could combo them for like eight counts, and then all of your other units would be ready to switch in after that. So leaves very little tactical um, you know thought left in what you need to do uh, with that in the game. Uh, a tackle can still be connected to the co next combo if it is used when your opponent is not already under attack. Okay, it's self-explanatory. Uh, even if your opponent is able to move after being hit, you cannot connect a tackle to the next combo if they are already under attack. Okay. Um, so here we go. Combo compensation adjustments. Since tackle can no longer be used to extend combos, we have reduced the severity of combo damage compensation. As a result, there will be an increase in the overall combo damage done by characters who can easily string together long combos. Hmm, can you guys think of any characters who are able to string together long combos? Hmm, you know what? Uh, I wonder. Uh, I wonder if there are any characters who can uh, string together long combos. Anyway. Um, Dogabuck Impact Adjustments. Some Dogabuck Impacts created by two uh, beam type special moves colliding now have the ability to deal a finishing blow. Uh, your opponent can be defeated if you win one of these Dogabuck Impacts and their health drops to zero. That's fine. I mean, this is... How often do you actually see this? I see this like maybe like once every 50 fights, maybe? Um, the only reason why they did this change, and then it says here, the opponent cannot be defeated when two strike cards or other similar attacks collide in a normal Dogabuck Impact. Yes, yeah, so, like that's... So this is the one where you're just two strike cards clash, and then this is the one where the special moves clash. So the only reason why they actually did this change is because for the regular strike one, if you win and your opponent's health reaches one, you can just tap blast them and they can't do anything about it. But for the beam clash one, and you win the beam clash, their health drops to one, you can't then connect that with any other like tap blast or anything. So that makes sense if they did this. I mean, it's, it's, you're never going to see this really. I mean, because in order to get this to actually happen, First of all, you have to enter into the clash, and again, this is this happens like once every 50 fights for me, and then you have to be in a position to where you're actually about to kill your opponent um, for that to actually matter. So that's that's going to be like once every 200 fights, this is going to matter. So very very rare situation. Um, but this I actually think could be a problem. Um, I think one of the bigger problems in the game already is the fact that they have released a lot of characters who. Um, are just hyper offensive and don't really care about type disadvantage, about cover cut, and they just do an abusive amount of uh, of damage and also an abusive amount of of just just strike cards or or even blast cards. And I pulled up these two as an example because these two are, you know, number the number one and number two offenders of this I think right now in the meta. Kefla, I mean, if you I'm sure you guys at this point have fought a bunch of Keflas. Kefla is able to string together like literally, like legitimately, like eight to nine strike cards in a row. Um, and you're sitting there for like 20 counts just getting comboed constantly. You, you can do nothing about it because if you switch out uh, to a character without cover cut or without uh, type advantage, they're going to get shredded because of her ability. Um, and she's going to get a lot more powerful with this because now, with this in here, um, if you have, you know, Kefla with starting the combo with four strike cards and she just keeps drawing cards and drawing cards and sidestepping and doing more damage and continuing to chain together combos that damage reduction that was there prior uh, with the penalty for chaining together more cards is no longer going to be as severe so this is an indirect buff to Kefla this is an indirect buff to, to Gotenks as well because Gotenks also has that ability too with his card draw speed and his main ability which draws cards so um, we can see some crazy stuff going on here I don't I'm assuming they tested this, so we'll see. Um, right now, I'm going to say I'm probably not a fan of this, but I am a fan of them removing the tackle step because the tackle step was just abusive, and it was it was so prevalent to the point where every single match you would see that being used, and I'm glad it's gone. 
uh, because it, now you're gonna have to, uh, you know, think of other ways to extend, uh, you know, extend combos or extend or buy time in order to get your other units switched in, right? So that's that. And then we have this new tag. Okay, this is interesting. Um, this new tag, powerful opponent coming. To bring more variety to your, to your party compositions, the powerful opponent tag will be added to the following characters. And it's literally every single antagonist. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think this heavily implies, uh, and this is actually kind of related to the second anniversary, I think, because they wouldn't just implement this just out of nowhere. Uh, I think we're probably going to see at least one, if not multiple characters that come out of the second anniversary, um, either buff this with their Z ability or have some sort of interaction with this tag in their unique abilities or main abilities. Um, and uh, one of the reasons why it's possible that they introduced this tag, Powerful Opponent, and literally included every single antagonist, because where's Hit? Hit has to be in here. Uh, let me see if I can just do a Control F for hit. Hit right there. So this is really hit, like one of hit's only tags that he has now. Let's go to characters. Let's pull up hit. If I can even find him on here, he's yellow. Uh, I just probably skipped him. Um, let's just go to universe six, it's easier to find him there. Um, hit was lacking in tags. It's, it's no, it's no surprise right universe six that was his only tag <laughs> and this god of destruction chop that was like the, the the saga that he's from so he was relegated to being a uh you know a yellow yellow blue uh unit that was basically his only team he could be used on unless you want to run universe six um, that team's just not good so uh this is really his first tag and if you think about why they might have implemented something like this tag uh, there's going to be one more character, or multiple characters, but there's going to be one more big time character who sort of falls into the same category as Hit, where he would be relegated to not being on many tags. And that's Jiren. Uh, Jiren is a character who, obviously, he would be on like Tournament of Power if they introduced that. Uh, Pride Troopers, but again, Pride Troopers probably isn't going to be that good of a team. Um, so. I I'm thinking that this might be a precursor to them releasing a Jiren character uh, during the second year anniversary, because this would help him out a lot. Like, let's say Jiren comes out, and like, what's he gonna buff? He's gonna buff like a color, like Hit does, because they're both in the same sort of bucket. With Hit only being on Universe Six, Jiren would be on Universe Eleven, and like, and then the like Universe Survival Saga, like Arc. Uh, which team that team could be good eventually, but it's they haven't really done much with sagas at this point, so I find that hard to believe. Um, so now with this tag, you can have Jiren maybe buffing the, what's it called? The uh, powerful opponent's tag with a Z ability. So you could literally throw him onto like any team. Like you, you could throw him on regen because basically there's, there's so many regen characters that are, that are sprinkled around in here. Um, and he would be, you know, helping out all those villains on there. So I don't know. This could, uh, this could indicate something like Jiren is coming. Uh, maybe, I mean, any villain that releases like Merge Zamasu would have this tag. Um, Omega Shenron would have this tag. Uh, Omega Shenron is kind of also another character that I feel like wouldn't be the recipient of too many categories. Actually, no, he might be on regen. <laughs> He'd be on GT for sure, and then I guess he would be on regen because he, he technically does regenerate, so never mind. Uh, so yeah, I think this probably is geared towards Jiren, so that also strengthens the argument that we might be getting a UI Goku during the anniversary. Um, so take with that as you want, but this is an interesting concept here. All these different characters, like literally every single villain, every single antagonist, uh, are is being added to this 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 uh, this tag here. So um, I don't know. It, does this indicate Jiren? I think there's a very strong possibility that it does. So that's pretty much all we got here. Again, a lot of uh, events are going away. Um, all of these events are going away. We have eight-hour maintenance tonight. Uh, where is this thing over here? Um, literally, as probably tomorrow morning or afternoon, I will make a video to, uh, going through the changes and show them on screen, so we have a better understanding of how they work. Uh, because they are being implemented tomorrow. And uh, the last thing I want to say is, don't be surprised if we see some uh, anniversary stuff being teased this week or uh, latest next week. Because remember, at this point in time, uh, I believe the Las Vegas tournament was going on last year 
and I think it was May 23rd or May 24th when they revealed uh, Super Vegito and Blue Goku. Um, so literally just a few days away from now, we could see our first like big, big teaser for the second anniversary. Don't be surprised if you log in tomorrow after maintenance and there's some teaser in the news. Um, we're very, very close. Final stretch here. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, and we'll be back, be back tomorrow with some more stuff and I will see you all then.